Hello everybody. If you're someone who is interested in physics, chemistry, electronics, and or getting more smarter, you should know the difference between voltage and amperage. Let's start with current. What is current? Think of a river. Current is the amount of water flowing through a certain space in a given time period. In electronics, this is measured in amperes, or amps. Obviously, amps are not a unit of water flow. They're a unit of electron flow. Electrons actually flow from the negative to positive lead on a battery. Conventional current, the current we usually think of when people say electricity, is what moves from the positive to negative leads. Conventional current is the movement of electron holes, which are when atoms could have one more electron in their valence shell, but they do not. An ampere, named after Andrea Marie Ampere, is measured in terms of coulombs per second. One amp equals one coulomb per one second. That definition does not help very much without knowing what a coulomb is, which is why I'm going to tell you what a coulomb is. A coulomb is the amount of electricity that is transported in one second by a current of one ampere. That doesn't help? Well, here. A coulomb is roughly 6.24150932 times 10 to the 18th electrons. So, one amp is equal to around 6.24150932 times 10 to the 18th electrons moving across a conductor per second. But something needs to move six quintillion electrons, so what is it? Speaking in river terms, voltage is the force or pressure with which the water is moving. In electrical terms, voltage is what actually moves electrons through a conductor. Voltage is also known as electromotive force, or EMF. It is a difference in energy potential which causes a net flow of electrons. Here's an analogy. Think of two people pushing on each other. One person is not very strong and is pushing with 30 pounds of force. The other person, however, is really strong and is pushing with 100 pounds of force. The difference in energy potential between these two angry people is 70 pounds. Now take two really strong people. One person is pushing with 250 pounds of force and the other could be pushing with 320 pounds of force. These two also have a difference in energy potential of 70 pounds. Look at these two pairs of people pushing on each other. Despite the two groups' strength differences, the weaker person in each pair will lose by 70 pounds of force. Now take a river. Two streams of water are flowing at one another. Both streams have the same water height, but one is flowing faster, and therefore with more energy than the other. After the two streams meet, there will be a net flow of water in the direction that the stream with more force and more energy is flowing. That's a difference in energy potential for you. Think of the water and men pushing on each other as voltage. Voltage is defined in terms of the amount of work that the electrons moving through a conductor could potentially do. One volt is one joule per coulomb. This means that a coulomb of electrons being moved through a circuit by one volt is capable of doing one joule of work. If you do not know, one joule is the amount of energy it takes to raise 100 grams one meter. A 1.5 volt battery is capable of doing 1.5 joules of work per coulomb of atoms. But you cannot just say that any one point by itself has 10 volts worth of potential energy. Voltage is relative. To say something by itself has 10 volts would be like picking up an object and saying, this object is 10 grams heavier. Heavier than what? Than a 10 kilogram object? Than a 3 gram object? It doesn't make sense, because saying that something is heavier is a relative measurement, and not an absolute measurement. There needs to be a reference for the measurement to make sense. This is why voltage is also called an electric potential difference. It is the difference between an electrical reference and an electrical source. On a voltage source like a battery, the reference is ground, or negative lead. The source is the positive lead. To say something is 10 volts would be to say that the energy potential of the positive is 10 volts greater than its reference. If something does not have a difference in electric potential between its positive and ground, then there is no voltage. Without any voltage, there is no current. This is because if there's nothing moving all of these electrons, there is no current actually flowing. No current actually passes through the conductor. It just sits there. Confusingly enough, voltage can actually exist without any current. In fact, this is what happens most of the time. I will demonstrate this. Cool! I'll do it again. Isn't that neat? These unconnected batteries demonstrate this. There is voltage, but no current flow. Let's go back to the river analogy. We'll put a dam in the river. There is pressure on the dam, but no water flow. Voltage is the pressure on the dam, and the lack of water flow is the lack of current. 
There is a voltage difference across the battery, but no current flow. Just like there's a difference in pressure on either side of the dam with no water flow. When we take away the dam and put something in its place which efficiently passes water with no resistance, all of the water will drain out of the source and no more current will flow. An ideal battery would be a battery which has no internal resistance. If you used a perfect conductor to short circuit an ideal battery, the battery would drain in an infinitely small amount of time because the conductor would drain all of the battery's current at once into the ground lead. In real life, this would not be possible because batteries all have some amount of non-ideal internal resistance, though they are able to supply an impressive amount of current despite this. In addition, perfect conductors do not exist. All conductors have some amount of resistance. What happens when you run too much current through a resistor? It gets really, really hot. The resistance in a battery and the resistance in the conductor are both what cause the battery and conductor to heat up when the wire short circuits the battery. Now that I have that out of the way, there is one more important concept. There are two types of current flow, which are called AC and DC, like the band. AC stands for alternating current. This is where the electron flow switches directions many times per second, instead of only flowing in just one direction. This is the type of current that comes out of wall outlets. DC, on the other hand, stands for direct current, and this is where electrons only flow in one direction, like the river example. DC current comes out of things like batteries. This brings me to my final four points. You should like, comment, and or subscribe, and I hope you like this video.